The next tool we're going to check out is the Direct Draw tool, and you'll find it over here on the uh, Tools menu. Is like a diagonal line in its initial configuration. It may look like one of these other things as well, because there are a lot of other tools in the same uh, subfolder. So you might want to rearrange these because there's there really are a lot in here. But in the original format, it's this line right here, the Direct Draw, and it has several different options, and they all let us make lines that are more perfect and more uh, more accurate than would be possible with our our hand alone. So if we need a perfect circle, for example, or a rectangle and so on, these are the tools that'll let you do that and they are very helpful. So the first one is just straight line and uh, just like the pens or the pencils, you can adjust so many things about how these are structured and you can change all kinds of things. But here's how the straight line tool works. You just click where you want it to start, drag it, and then release at the end. And you can move it before you actually release, so it gives you a lot of control. And you can also change the brush shape using one of these other shapes, for example, if I want a dotted line, and voila. And there's all kinds of things you can change about it. It has all the change features in the subtool menu that you have with the uh, your other pens and pencils, so you can really change it however you want it to look. It's great. Let's take a look at the other ones. We have a curve. The curve works by placing and clicking where we want it to start and holding down and dragging to the end point and then releasing. And then it gives you now the option of moving it and making it any kind of curve that we want. So let's say I want it like that. When I get it to where I want it, I just uh, click again and it makes the actual line. So that is the curve tool. Next one is the polyline. And actually, before I go to the polyline, let's go back to the curve tool. This actually is a subtool uh, feature that gives us a little more control that we don't have in our other uh, pens and pencil subtools. So under unit curve, the first item is this option for how the curve is made. And you can, if you want to make the, put this to the menu, just click the eyeball and it'll move there. But basically, you have a straight line, which is how we were doing it initially. And then we also have this, which is the quadratic bezier. And this works by dragging, releasing, and this is the one we were doing in the initial setup. So quadratic bezier is the one I use the most for a curve. And then the third one is the cubic bezier. And this, this one works a little differently. You click where you want it to begin and you drag, holding it down. And then you go to the end point and then you release. And then it will give you this option to move it like before with the other curve. But then when you click now, it gives you like a third option to curve it. And it's still interacting with this point that you clicked, if that makes sense. So it's you can do all kinds of weird things with this one, but it's it's kind of reacting to this, almost like it's there's a string that's connected to it. But when you get it to where you want it, you click, and it makes your line, and that second point is just gone. So let me do that again. So you click, hold down, and drag, get to uh, an end point, and then release, and then you can stretch it out to where you want that kind of gravity point to be, and then you click, and then you can move it again, and it's still kind of constrained by that gravity point a little. And that's how you do that one. That is the uh, cubic bezier. I don't use that one too often, but you can get some nice lines out of it. Okay, so I'm going to close this and look at the other main tools. We have the polyline tool. This is uh, going to make uh, click, drag. Actually, excuse me, let me start again. So you click and then you lift up, and so I'm, I'm about an inch off my tablet. And then when you get to another point, you click, and then you can move again and click, and click. And when you're done, you could either double click, or if you take it back to the beginning, it'll give you another option. Let me show you. So if you click, 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 click. When you get back over the original point, it'll you see that change? It gives you a circle, which means that when you click now, it'll seal it up and it'll make you a nice shape. 
So that is a an outline of the shape. There are other options on here. You can have just a fill, which will, like it says, create a fill. And let's take a look at that. So if I go click, 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 and then it fills it up with whatever color I'm using. And if I, I'm going to talk more about how you change the colors later on, but it's basically right here. And using your color wheel, you can alter the color to anything you want. And you can also have it as a line and a fill. You'll notice that here's the preview. The line is black and the inside is like this purple. And that is because we have our two colors, our foreground, foreground color and our background color. I'll talk a little more about this later, but that's how you change what you want the inside to be or the outside. You can, that is all up for grabs. So let me show you what that would look like. It just, just like before you can click, click, click. And when you get back to your center, you click again and it'll seal it up. I'm not sure what happens if you don't seal it up. I think with this option, it will automatically seal it up. Let's see. So if I go to here and I just finish here. Oh yeah, it does automatically seal it, seal it up. So that is how you do the, uh, uh, polyline feature and in addition to the polyline you, you can, just like before with the uh, lines you can change the shapes you can get some pretty um, wild looking shapes and that wasn't very pronounced let's change the size okay that wasn't very great either <laughs> but uh, yeah play around with this because like I said you can get some amazing uh, effects and designs out of this. So I'm going to switch it back to line again. And let's take a look at the next one, the continuous curve tool. Let's clear this. Click on this and uh, there are different ways you can make uh, your continuous curves as well. So this has quite a few options. So the spline option is what it defaults to and that goes like, uh, let's see, so basically it's, it's making a curve that kind of matches all your points and it does its best. The, the fewer points you have actually, the smoother the curve will be. That's kind of a interesting uh, or counterintuitive idea about that. Let me show you what I mean, but just four points, it'll make a very smooth shape with very, no like bumps. Whereas if I use like a bunch of lines, I mean a bunch of points, not as smooth a, a shape you notice. So keep that in mind when you make your curves. And that'll come in also when we make our, our balloons for our dialogue. The less uh, points you use, the smoother or the more uh, round the shape will be. So that was spline. If you use straight line, it's going to be, this isn't really a curve, I don't believe. Yeah, so it's not really even a curve. It's kind of misleading to have that under continuous curve since it's pretty much exactly what the polyline does, but for some reason they include it here as well. And this also has the fill feature and the fill and line feature, just like the polyline. Let's try the quadratic bezier. This works like the other one that we looked at. So you see that one, it made the shape, but then when it finished, it kind of bounded it by those points around it. It's, it's kind of a... That one, I didn't, I didn't match it up right, so it came out kind of weird. So I think when you, uh, when you get it to actually close, it kind of forces it into a kind of like a post-correction, um, extremely strong uh, alteration. The other one is the quad cubic bezier. The cubic bezier will give you some uh, pretty interesting shapes. Here's how it works. You, uh, you click and you hold down and press to your next point, then you release. And then when you get to your another point, let's say here, you can uh, really drag it around. I'm holding it down still. I haven't released it and kind of modify it. And then, Wherever I modify it is going to be another point. So I release and there's a point there that it's kind of acting on. So I click to another point. Let's say I click over here, but it's still reacting to this point. So it's, 
I, I don't know if I'm really explaining it well. I think you just need to try this one and uh, you can get some nice lines out of this. It gives you a lot of control and very abstract shapes. And if you're working on a, I don't know, some organic form that has a strange side, this will let you get a very smooth line around it. So it's pretty helpful. And like before, it has the same options with brush shape, with all the sub tools. So there's a lot of great things you can do. The next tool is the lasso fill tool. The lasso fill tool is pretty cool. It lets you change, uh, it lets you fill in basically whatever you, you draw with it. So if I draw a shape like this and then release, it'll fill it up with my foreground color, which is black in this case. But later on we can change, I'll show you how you can change the colors like that. Just slide it around on the color wheel. And you don't even have to finish it. You can just release here and it'll put a straight line to the, the next, uh, to close it up, which is kind of nice. So you can get a lot of cool effects with this as well. This is a good tool when you're drawing or shading. Um, I think you'll find this very helpful. Next we have the rectangle. And I'm going to change the color back to black. And like it sounds, it just creates a rectangle of whatever shape you want. So that, if you want to lock the um, aspect ratio, you can do that by clicking on here. So now it'll give you a perfect square, for example. Or you can also adjust the uh, dimensions. Oops. You can specify the ratio by clicking the plus sign. So right now it's one to one, which means every, one side is equal to one side. But if you want to make it, for example, uh, two to one, which would be a rectangle, but it'll always be the same ratio. So that's kind of nice. You can tweak that. And you can also change it based on the length rather than the ratio. So whichever way you prefer, I'm going to leave it at one to one. Because if I use it, use it in that sense, I usually use it as a square and I'm going to unlock it. If you click here, the adjust angle after fixed, I'm going to clear this. And so let's say I make one, a rectangle and then I release but it still hasn't made it because it, now it gives me the chance to rotate it around, which is helpful. Let's say I want to like here, then I click and it locks it. So that's kind of cool. And let's look at the next one, the ellipse. This is pretty much just like the rectangle, except it's an ellipse. So if I don't have the aspect ratio or aspect type, it's going to let me modify it completely. And then I click. Um, I have adjust angle after fixed, which means I go like this and then release and then it lets me swirl it around. And just like before, I can lock the aspect type. Here's a perfect circle and so on. And I can modify that. I can change the aliasing. I can change the what I use to make my uh, circle. And just like before, all the sub tools. And then next we have the polygon. Polygon is going to let you make a shape of three or more sides. And if you click on the plus sign on figure, it'll let you modify the number of vertexes, which are essentially the corners of the shape. So you can take it down to three, a triangle, and take it all the way up to 32. So, which is nearly a circle, as you'll see. Let's, that's practically a circle for all intents and purposes. It's just got a very, uh, <laughs> yeah, this, this is like a jagged circle, but if you take it down to a smaller number and it's more noticeable and uh, you take it all the way down to a triangle. And like before, you can lock the um, aspect type if you want a perfect triangle and so on. Oops. You can change the line and fill the you can alter the aspect type and 
so on. So you can see all these have like a basic kind of structure. There's just a few different modifications in each one. You can add roundness to the corners. So if I turn this all the way up, it's almost like a, let's look at that for the triangle. It's like barely a triangle at that point. And if I turn it down, it'll become more pointy. So those are all very helpful for making shapes, which I think you'll you'll want to use as you as you go along with your uh, your drawings.